is Fragmented, an Android developer podcast where we talk about building good software and becoming better Android developers. Welcome to episode number nine. This is the special Google I.O. 2015 episode. In this episode, Kaushik makes the trek to Google I.O. and chats with various Android developers about their favorite part of Google I.O. I was not able to make it, but Kaushik was able to interview some of the top developers in the industry, and I'll tell you what, this is a great episode. I really wish I was there to join him. I know he had a great time chatting and interacting with everyone. Before we get into the show, I do want to apologize for the background noise in this episode. This was recorded live at Google I.O., and you're getting the full effect of the recording. Background noises and all. I'll let Kaushik take it from here. This is Kaushik, reporting live from Google I.O. 2015. The keynote was amazing, but what we're going to do now is talk to a couple of developers, and I think that's going to be even more amazing. So stay tuned, and let's go ahead and meet a couple of developers. I'm Dan Liu, I work at Trello, and I'm an Android developer. So we're going to be talking about a topic now that we have never discussed with you before, so let's start talking about our next job. (laughs) (laughs) I'm kidding. Okay, so what is the most exciting announcement that you basically heard at I.O. today? Uh, Definitely the granular permissions for... Uh, the upcoming M release. Okay. So I think that's something everyone's been wanting for a long time. Right. And there are so many times where we've wanted to add a feature to an app as mm-hmm. kind of an optional dependency, mm-hmm. but we didn't want to scare users away with these right. with these creepy permissions. And now right. we can, you know, suppose suppose you want to autofill some data in a booking form. Mm-hmm. We didn't want to scare people away by asking for contact information but now in context when we ask for it it'll make a lot more sense so a lot of like the trouble like i remember like uber had this problem at some point right there was a blog post where they're like oh my god uber's like asking all these permissions and then uber's like hey 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 you're asking it for a reason and this is why a lot of that now just like uh, like following the ios model like it's like it, it, it helps with that a lot yeah it just helps a lot with user trust okay and that's very important <laughs> obviously on the flip side what is one announcement that you would have liked for them to have announced but they didn't Ah, uh, nothing really, actually. Okay. I, 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 I tend to... Uh, well, my wife gets very angry at me because <laughs> she will want to know what I think is going to happen in the movie, and I just don't really speculate. <laughs> I just like okay. to sit back and see what happens. So. Okay, okay. And, yeah, most of the things are like... Is there, like, any, like, super pressing pain point at this that, that you feel that Google needs to solve, and like, or, like, in the Android platform specifically, or... Uh, I would say and it sounds, covered, it like, sounds the like they've been working on it, okay. um, but just the whole notification and volume settings. Um, Interesting, yeah. And that one is just, it's such a pain point for a lot of people right. that it's not major, but it's it's big enough deal that a lot of people complain to me about it. and. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be good if they polished that off. Especially with the lollipop update, like, it was, like, super cryptic, right? Like, I mean, it was hard to, like, sort of, like, they tried to be intelligent, but actually it was, like, not so, like, uh, yeah. intuitive to begin with. Right? Yeah, I even wrote a blog post about it, because I, I had to run, like, experiments. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, spent a day experimenting <laughs> I know, I with know. how notifications worked exactly to come up with the conclusions I did, and that yeah. really shouldn't be the case. <laughs> yeah. Especially when previous versions of Android, it just seemed to it make worked, intuitive yeah. sense. Yeah. So here's a, uh, a little different question. So assuming Google pushed out like this hypothetical update where it's called a deserted island update where you're allowed to install only three applications on your phone, which three applications would you pick and why? Well, supposing I had Wi-Fi access, <laughs> uh, I would probably install um, a, an RSS reader. Okay. So like the one I'm using right now is GReader. Man, you Just really so like I, your RSS. Don't I you? love RSS, so <laughs> I'd, I would do that so I can keep up on the news. Okay. I would probably install, uh, what is it called now? They t- the app recently changed its name, Relay for Reddit. Oh, yes. So I use Reddit a lot. Right. And yeah, I'd yeah. probably install Pocket Cast so I could listen to podcasts. So okay. I'd be covering a lot of the bases in terms of... Uh, what content just basically all media consumption apps <laughs> so yeah. I wouldn't get bored on this desert island yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sense. has amazing Wi-Fi yeah uh, for sure <laughs> you're building a new app from scratch right like totally greenfield app you're allowed to pull only three dependencies in your app which three dependencies would you pick uh, does support <laughs> library in those count as a dependency uh, well no let's say you have the support library that comes for free is that come, come for free uh <laughs> huh, interesting. Let's say no. I would have to pull an app compat, I think, at this okay. point. Okay. Um, so that would be number one. Okay. Oh, geez. I guess I'd probably pull in Dagger as number two. Okay. Just because that 
that helps so much in just organizing the way I'm working with things. And I feel somewhat obligated to say RX Java for number three. Okay. Otherwise, I'm going to invalidate the whole previous podcast where I <laughs> went on and on and on about it. Good call about that. <laughs> Good call about that. Although, really, probably probably more like OKHTTP OK because I don't want to have to deal with yeah. <laughs> all the HTTP madness. Oh, yeah. That's true. That's true. Like, I can, re- I can reproduce the observable pattern on my own, but okay. I don't want to have to re-implement Ooh, HTTP. Yeah, that doesn't sound like fun at all. <laughs> okay, cool. So... Having fun at IO, who's like, did you meet any cool person or yeah, people? I met a whole bunch of cool people actually. Okay. I don't know, I don't want to single any one person out. Okay. Um, well, one, I guess it's been fun meeting people from way far away in the world. Nice. So, like, uh, the Pocket Cast people are here, oh, yeah, yeah. and Chris Lacey is here too, and so it's been fun meeting them because there's, I mean, it's yeah. a 16 hour flight or something, so it's great that they made it out yeah. to this. And most conversations with them have always just been virtual. It's nice to like, yeah. meet them in person. Yeah, this year has been great because I feel like I know a lot more people in the community now, and so it's been very fun just meeting up with everyone. Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, Dan, so last question, last random question here. Are you a dark or light theme person? Uh, light theme. All right. <laughs> I, I, I feared like, most people would say dark theme because like, I've, st- I've switched to a light theme and I really like it now. Okay, so that's good. Well, this, this is this sort of goes along with my like complete laziness and so turns my oh, IE. Oh yeah, I and light theme happens to be the default, <laughs> and so I just through necessity I have learned to like the light theme. So if they switch to Darkula, you'll just like switch probably to... just would stick with that too. <laughs> You're amazing. I, I love how lazy you are about your development environment. <laughs> yeah, it probably doesn't help yeah. me out at all, but yeah. <laughs> How do people get in touch with you then? I think the easiest way would be on Twitter. Um, and my Twitter handle is danlew42. That's a D-A-N-L-E-W-4-2. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much, Dan. Hope you enjoy the rest of bio. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Hey, uh, my name is Ty Smith. I work on the Fabric team at Twitter. Uh, I have recently open-sourced a lot of the Twitter SDKs, and I spend a lot of time helping build out our platform to make great developer tools. Awesome. Congratulations on that. I know you guys have like been kicking major, but recently the Twitter team has like been doing amazing things. Thank you. It's uh, All the thanks goes to the team. I work with a lot of great people. Amazing, amazing. All right. So what was the most exciting announcement that you thought was made at I.O. this time? So I'm, I'm pretty excited about the dynamic permission models. Right. That's definitely plagued a lot of users for a long time. Right. Um, and it, it plagues developers as well, but there's very different concerns there. Mm-hmm. You know, Obviously, they, they called it out in the keynote, but it, if you add a new permission after you've launched, it screws up your auto-updates. Mm-hmm. Uh, users see that, and they get scared. They say, why does your, you know, why does your app need to modify my USB storage? Mm-hmm. Um, they don't really understand the ramifications of that, and it's hard to explain. Right. So I'm pretty excited to see that. Uh, I have... Um, I haven't yet got to play with it, so it'll be interesting to see how that how uh, older apps behave in that model, mm-hmm. um, how we uh, you know wait and throw that dialogue, and yeah. um, how much of that is automated and how much of that takes a little bit of backporting. Yeah, they gave like a blanket sort of thing, a statement saying like, "Hey, you better make sure it works." Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, like how? Yeah, they're like. I can already think of like a hundred edge cases that <laughs> exactly. You I mean, would have th- to there's like going to be a, a lot of places where you need to asynchronously like right. wait for that response and then like figure <laughs> out how you move forward. Exactly. Um, yeah. So there'll be uh, that's especially exciting for doing SDK development right. because right. there's a lot of things we do in like the Fabric SDKs where say if you have uh, access network state as a permission, we will check if you uh, if we can hit the server before we try to upload a crash from Crashlytics, right. for right. example. Right. Right. Um, but if that's not granted, we have to have just a graceful fallback. Oh, yeah. And that is always, yeah. re- it's always true, right? Because right. we have to try regardless. Right, right. And you could be, you know, uh, not in a great network state right. or something. Mm-hmm. And it would just be wasted, you know, bringing up the cell, trying to go after the, um, the radio tower. Yeah. So it'll be nice that using the SDKs, uh, we can just have it prompt the user like, hey, uh, you know, this is trying to use access network state right. uh, or whatever the related one is. I know they're, they're grouping those now. Mm-hmm. So um, we'll have to see exactly how that yeah. plays out but I'm excited to play with it nice nice yeah uh, do you think there was any like announcement that you were hoping would be made at IO but wasn't made you know um, one thing that that's kind of been a topic of conversation lately is uh, an annoyance in detecting if the keyboard is up <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was talking with a few friends, and we it's were... It's deceptively, actually... Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like a simple problem, but right? yeah, for sure, it's like, yeah. It's there's... like you have to you have to measure if, like, your your entire, like, view tree changed, <laughs> right. and, like, is it, like, a certain amount that you make a guesstimation if right. the keyboard has shown and you've resized or you've, right. or you've panned? Especially if you're looking for, like, a foolproof solution, right? Yeah. Versus uh, just something like, oh, I'm going to try to hide the keyboard. If it hides, that's great. <laughs> and, I, and I can see how it could be complicated with, like, the keyboard API and having the third-party keyboards. Right. 
However, like having some, you know, introducing some new interfaces that were forced to be used, yeah. things like how iOS has keyboard did show. Right. Uh, I think that would um, simplify a lot. Yeah. Because yeah, obviously, if anyone can make this problem specifically simpler, it's yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's minor. Um, <laughs> yeah. But it's it's like been an annoyance of every right. of a lot of Android developers. So. <laughs> cool. Okay, so here's a little different question. Uh, if Google ship like an update where basically they're like, hey, you can only install three apps, like a deserted island sort of update. What what are like three apps that you would pick? Like, what are the three most important apps that you feel that you should really have installed on your phone? Okay, so I want to clear the, f- clarify the question. Okay. Am I on a deserted island, or do I have a phone that can only have three apps installed? That is a good question. I left that intentionally vague. <laughs> Let's assume that I'm on a deserted island okay. with somehow uh, free free Wi-Fi. Nice. This nice, yeah. okay. this nice desert Wi-Fi. Island. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, I definitely want to keep up with the world that's going on. Right. Okay. So uh, <laughs> definitely something like Twitter. Right. Uh, Maybe Reddit, but we'll stick with Twitter for now. Okay. Uh, you know, no bias there. <laughs> yeah, uh, I definitely want something to for entertainment. Yeah, like Google Play movies, probably. Okay. okay. Uh, you know, we get TV shows, we get movies in that. Okay. Uh, if we have unlimited Wi-Fi, we'll assume there's an unlimited budget that right. we can use for purchasing that stuff as well. Because <laughs> why not? <laughs> um, oh, and let's see, what would a, a great third one be? You know, I'll, I'll say I'll say Twitter, Reddit, and Google Play movies. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so here's like a, a little more developer-focused one. So assuming you're building like a brand new application and you're allowed to pull only three dependencies, what three dependencies would you pull? Okay. Uh, Let's say like, yeah, the support library, all that is like in. Like you, you get that for free. Perfect. Um, well, the first one I would use that I use in pretty much every project that I get the opportunity to use is Dagger. Uh, okay. It helps uh, architect apps in a way that I'm much more comfortable with. It helps right. build testable code. That helps you uh, decouple and uh, really really help uh, when you you know when you inject dependencies create um, single responsibility classes that get all the dependencies up front that you can then mock and test um, and so that definitely is one of them okay. um, that helps really set the stage for building a maintainable code base moving Thanks. forward um, on top of that I think that it's it's important uh, it, to actually have testing code mm-hmm. and we definitely need to use Mockito. Okay. Uh, yeah. or, or another similar uh, power mock or whatever. <laughs> right, I'm not right, dead right. set on that. Okay. But something so that we can mock and test. Mm-hmm. Um, fortunately, that, or unfortunately, that's not provided by the system, but right. we, could, we could take advantage of that. Then from more, a more consumer perspective, you know, most, you're not really going to build an app these days that doesn't have some sort of web component sitting right. in a REST API. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've really come to rely on using Retrofit for really clean interfaces. Nice. Um, it just, it's a really nice way of, right. of using... Mm-hmm. You know, hitting these REST APIs and consuming these JSON blobs down into POJOs or you know XML or whatever your converter mm-hmm. is, okay. um, it's cheating a little bit because Retrofit depends on OKHTP I mean, yeah. and <laughs> JSON and yeah. like I just got a few for free, yeah, so I'm completely okay with. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. okay with that. That's that's a good <laughs> loophole. <laughs> All right. If there was one thing you could change about Android now, what would that be? If there's one thing I could change, um, some of the most annoying parts of working with Android. Uh, are around a few different types of APIs. Okay. So a lot of times I hear people talk about fragmentation. Right. But when people talk about fragmentation, it's usually not an Android developer talking about fragmentation because right. mm-hmm. the tools are, are good enough most of the time. And if you think about the perspective from doing layouts of like how maybe responsive web would be done where you have you know not one mm-hmm. pixel-perfect layout, right. but you have many that scale and, right. and look different, then it's not really a big deal right. until you come to like a couple different pieces of the mm-hmm. API. And most of that's around like the camera and the media oh, playback. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What, what the manufacturers do is, you know, they oftentimes they have to go through this certification program with mm-hmm. Google before they get the Google apps loaded on right. the phone. Samsung and all these guys do this. And they will provide a lot of the APIs that, like, the Camera API or the Camera 2 API mm-hmm. require. But they won't declare that in their sheets that are going out to Google for the certification. So they don't go through the full certifications test suite for the cameras. Oh, interesting. It's kind of a loophole that the manufacturers have been using for a little while. Oh, wow, okay. And so what you end up getting is you get something that looks like it would work. Right. But they don't always respect those APIs right. exactly. It would either work, uh, like, a little differently or not work at Yeah, all. and that breaks expectations. Right. And so then you have all these edge case devices. Yeah. Uh, you know, another another problem is would be with the the media playback as yeah, well. Uh, you sure. know, different codecs on different yeah. devices oh, geez, yeah. uh, for both audio and video. Those are those are really painful across. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would be uh, very ecstatic if Google could tighten down their grips a little bit on some of the manufacturers when it comes to the certification process for mm-hmm. preloading the Google apps on it right. to get some of that in order for for okay. developers to use. 
Perfect. Makes sense. Uh, okay, so more a little uh, a little more on iOS stuff. Like, what's the craziest thing that you've either done or heard at IO? Because you're a veteran at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so in in all of in all of the IOS? Oh yeah, yeah, any of the IOS. Oh, uh, you know, a, a couple years ago they had um, the big game of Labyrinth. Okay, yeah, yeah. If you remember that one, uh-huh. and they had people lined up playing it all day, uh, and I, I played that game probably. 15 or 20 times like waited to line a bunch to like right. really try to nail it right. and it was like on the very last day at almost near the end okay. like I got it sweet and I was ecstatic and it was so goofy yeah. um, but it, it was like it was right when they introduced the um, the ADK oh yeah yeah so it was like the little Arduino integrations right. and they right. were just right. showing it off with the super gimmicky thing right. um, and it was a lot of fun like it was nice. this great interactive game it really showed like how to bring personality into the type of like DIY right. Right. hacking projects nice. that that a lot of us like to work on. Yeah, nice. Okay, last random question. Are you a dark or a light theme person? It really varies. Uh, okay. So it depends on the type of content that I'm consuming. Oh, so do you switch like your themes in Android Studio as like depending on like... Oh, so for, for, for apps or for Studio? Oh, yeah, no, no. For, uh, sorry, yeah. For Android Studio, oh, when okay, you code perfect. up, like dark, dark or light themes? Dark. dark. Yep. Always dark? Yep. Like, you're settled. Okay, interesting. Yep, uh, always. Okay, cool. Thank you so much for your time, Ty. Uh, how do people get in touch with you? Like what's the best way they can consume like the content that you keep? Uh, the best way is to follow me on Twitter. My handle's at T Smith. And uh, I'll, I'm pretty active there. So follow me and I'll, I'll link off to everything else. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks. I'm Eric Cochran. I work at IFT, which is short for If This Then That. And I build our four Android apps, the If app and three Do apps. Amazing. Uh, okay, uh, Eric. So what's like the most amazing announcement that you heard today at Google I.O.? I think the design support library is oh, wow, going yeah. to be huge, um, especially for us. Going to remove a lot of our kind of hacky code. <laughs> okay, so just like in terms of consistency, getting more consistency across. Like, the Definitely apps. more consistent. Yes. Okay. Sweet. Uh, okay, so what's one announcement that you thought uh, could have been made by Google at I/O, but they basically didn't? I was really hoping for a new Nexus 7. Um, (laughs) Yeah, the Nexus 7 line has been pretty solid, and now it's been like a year and a half without a Nexus 7. Okay. The Nexus 9 not too enticing? Um, I mean, I don't know. It's like six months old now, and like, Mm -hmm. I don't think it's gotten like the rave respect that the Nexus 7 line has gotten. Right. Makes sense. Okay, so uh, this is like a random question, right? So if Google shipped like this deserted island update where essentially you're allowed to install only three apps on your phone, what three apps do you think are the most important ones that you would want to like, install? I would install Google Music, okay. Link Bubble, mm-hmm. and Stack Exchange. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, okay, so a, a, a little more developer focus. So if you're building like this new app from scratch and you're allowed only three dependencies uh, like in your uh, app, mm-hmm. The app compared, the support stuff, you get all that for free. Oh, Only okay, not including those. All right. Yeah. Gotcha. Only three dependencies, like third party library dependencies, which three ones would you put? Okay, shoot. <laughs> I was thinking app compat and recycler review. Um, yeah. I would use OKHCP, mm-hmm. auto, and mortar and flow. Yeah, makes sense. I like that mm-hmm. choice. You're not a fragments person. Um, I actually am, but okay. um, I've been. I think, so the Fragment Manager um, gives a lot of functionality mm-hmm. that I think a lot of people just don't need uh, in their apps. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think Modern Flow more simplifies uh, just maintaining view state rather than an entire Fragment Manager. Makes sense. Uh, cool. So if there was one thing that you could change about Android in general, what would it be? I would have a giant lint flag uh, (laughs) when somebody puts in a config change uh, into the manifest. (laughs) I I run into too many open source projects that um, have config change hacks instead of instead of reinstating the state. Uh, Okay, what's the craziest thing that you've done or heard at like all the like any IO, not just this one? Is there like any crazy thing that you've heard being done or you have done at like an IO? Uh, well, it's skydiving. I oh, mean, nobody's yeah. really going to take the cake over yeah. that. <laughs> no, that. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. Last random question. So, in Android Studio, are you like a dark or a light theme person? 
Dark. Dark? Definitely the Dracula theme. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for yeah, your thank uh, you. time, uh, Eric. So if people want to reach out to you, like see the stuff that you've put out, like where's the best place that you can get all that? Yeah, definitely reach out to me on GitHub um, okay. and on Google+. Plus What's your too. handle? Sorry, what's your handle? Oh, yeah. Uh, my handle is Nightly Nexus. Okay. And, um, and I'm very active on Google+, Plus too. So okay. definitely find me there. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I'm Cyril Moutier, so I'm a software engineer at Captain Train, a company based in Paris, which basically sells uh, train tickets, but what I'm doing there is um, to take uh, care of the Android applications, so on the mobile, on tablets, and also on Android Wear, and we are trying to go beyond just selling train tickets on mobile because we can improve the travel experience, basically, mm -hmm. and that's what I do there is just to yeah, improve this uh, travel experience. Uh, so this is what I do on a professional side, but on a personal side, I am also um, quite, let's say, active. Uh, I try to be active on the community by uh, oh, yeah. sharing <laughs> sharing my yeah. my experience on Android yeah. using my blog blog on sirinmotier.com or using social networks such as Twitter or Google Plus. Excellent, excellent. Uh, okay, uh, so, so like, what was the most exciting oh, announcement to... that you heard today at Google I.O.? I think it's going to be uh, weird for you because um, I don't think that the most exciting announcement for me was Android M. Okay. It was actually um, Google Photo. Yeah, because I think Google Photo was really um, a wow effect. Oh, so yeah, basically, yeah. when they announced that you can search uh, with uh, with textual uh, queries mm -hmm. on your pictures, that you can you know browse your uh, pictures that easily, mm -hmm. and when also they announced that you could uh, uh, upload um, your photos with no limits, this was really awesome for me. So oh, yeah, I would sure. say that this, this was the most exciting announcement for I me. I can't wait I, uh, for the update as well. And it's like, yeah. it's coming pretty soon, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's going to be I, available like... Actually, I, on the uh, on my Android Wear device, I already have it. So you can oh, already wow. download Fantastic. it. And okay, yeah. I've tried it out like two seconds and it was really great. Yeah. Really, what really I great. love about that is also like you don't have to manually do any edits. Like automatically, like, yeah, it yeah. does like it uses like it's like yeah. natural language processing or whatever, like the intelligence to sort of like group your photos. Yeah. That's amazing. I don't like, yeah, I hate going back to like and tagging like photos. Yeah, me That's too. Like I, I definitely have to try it out more, but mm -hmm. I think it's a great, great app. Fantastic. Okay, so what was like uh, along those same lines, right? What was one announcement you thought Google should have made or like could have made but didn't? Like one you were hoping for, like that would be made at Google I/O but was not made. Okay, so I was hoping for a lot of things, <laughs> but I would say that okay. well, I think the most um, important announcement that I was expecting was. A, a, a change mm -hmm. uh, regarding the language we okay. use to program oh, on Android. Right, right. And so I, I think that you know that I would yeah. love to have seen uh, Dart. Oh, yeah. uh, but I'm not sure that this is the, the, the way Google is thinking right now. Right, right. So I would have expected something like Java 8 or something. Right, but right. <laughs> nothing has been announced. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a little bit disappointed about <laughs> this. Okay. So here's like a different question. This is like so our listeners get a good idea about like you and like the kind of apps that you use. Yep. Assuming Google shipped like an update where they say, okay, now on your Android phone, you are allowed to install only three applications, right? Like a deserted yep. island sort of update. What three apps would you pick? Well, that, that's a tricky question because it looks like a very hard limit, like <laughs> other than the um, you know yeah. the method count limit in, right, right. in the text format. Right. So basically, I would say that I would uh, keep only Gmail, of course, because I'm using okay. emails a lot. Okay. Um, I would also love to keep uh, Pocket Cast because oh, yeah? I, I really love, well, yeah. <laughs> podcast. But right. I uh, I think the app is really really great, especially mm -hmm. when you look at the design and mm -hmm. how material it is mm -hmm. and of course because I travel a lot right. I would keep oh, yeah. Captain Train of course because <laughs> I need to book for my um, yeah. for my tickets and also to uh, uh, know when I have to go to the uh, station okay. the railway station and stuff like is that Is Captain Train coming to America? Uh, well it's not in, the, in our plans for okay, now okay. we're trying to expand in Europe right, right. and the thing is I think a train is not really uh, famous in, true, in America true. so that's why we're not focusing yeah. on them on, it, on the mean, United like, States I, Yeah I, I don't like I mean obviously I've not used the app like for purchasing but like I do it just because I've seen some of your updates and blog yeah. posts and it's a fantastic app so yeah. excellent job but the thing is if you don't purchase unfortunately you can't see the where the, the app is going for instance yeah. <laughs> the travel experience I think is really great right yeah 
Nice. Especially when you're using your Android Wear device in addition to your uh, mobile phones. So assuming you were starting like a new app from scratch, right? Like you're building yep. this new Android app and you're allowed only three dependencies. You can pull only three dependencies. Okay. Which three dependencies would you pull? Well, um, first I think I would use uh, JSON from Google, oh, the yeah, JSON okay. library to, right, you know, right. to, uh, to decode JSON. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really a huge fan of Retrofit from Square right. because I think it abstracts you know the um, right. the, the the layer, the mm -hmm. network layer, mm -hmm. um, really great. Uh, and um, well, it depends on what what kind of application you're uh, using. But okay, for instance, right. if you're uh, you're you're developing, sorry. So if right. you're developing an application that requires a lot of uh, down, uh, image downloads, right. then I would probably use a library for that. Okay. So such as Glide, Picasso, or right. something like that. Yeah. All right. If Google came to you and said, okay. You're allowed to change one thing in Android, okay? Like, yeah. Hey, sir, change this one thing in Android. What would you pick to change? <sighs> no. Tricky question. <laughs> I think I would think about uh, the back stack and, oh, uh, yeah, you yeah. know, the Fragments, ancient yeah. flags like right. um, mm -hmm. clear, clear on top and stuff like that because right. this is awful. Right. Yeah, really. Uh, I, I hate that. And uh, in full play, yeah. yeah, yeah, <laughs> and especially also the back and up buttons. Yeah, I think nobody understand that. <laughs> no developers understand that, and right. uh, that's even worse for users. Yeah. So I would definitely try to improve that. Makes sense. Uh, going back to Google I/O, like who, like, did you meet any cool people here? Like, who are the coolest people you've met so far here at I/O? Uh, everybody. Oh. Well, no, that's <laughs> a great point. <laughs> yeah, when you're coming to, well, I, I'm not coming to uh, San Francisco a lot, so yeah, whenever right. I'm coming here, it's always a pleasure to meet everybody and mm -hmm. and talk to people and. Uh, and try to understand where what people are doing and where Google is going. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there is one person mm -hmm. on top of everybody. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really love to talk to everybody. Yeah. Nice answer. Diplomatic answer. Yeah. No, <laughs> That's yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's going to come back and like, I could say I, I like to, to talk to you. <laughs> Only to you. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Even better answer. <laughs> okay. So uh, you, you've, this is not your first I.O., right? You've been... No, yeah, I think it's my third or fourth yeah. Nice. Okay, so like, what's the craziest thing that you've seen at I.O.? My first I.O., I think, because I was a newbie okay. with I.O., <laughs> and because Sergey jumped from a plane. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. It was a good, uh, yeah, yeah. this edition where they introduced the Google Glasses. Right, right. So I'm not a huge fan of Google Glass, Okay. <laughs> but I, I was really wow when he, uh, well, jumped yeah. from the plane. It was and, a and, spectacular and showcased, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. showcased uh, the Google Glasses at this time. Cool. Okay, and last, very last question. So you use Android Studio, right? Yeah, are yeah, you course. a dark theme or a light theme person? Uh, oh, I'm a dark theme. Dark yeah. theme? Okay, yeah. Okay. Cool, I thought cool. it was a question about uh, are you using oh, uh, in the app? Yeah, yeah, yeah in the app. Yeah. Well, I'm more in light okay. in, in the app, app, but when I'm using Android Studio, I'm using the dark. Excellent. Theme. So yeah. additional answer for yeah. our listeners. <laughs> yeah. Always a pleasure to talk to you. If yeah. our listeners want to reach uh, reach out to you or like if they want to like follow like the great stuff that you're putting up online, yeah. What are some places they can do that? Well, they can contact me on Twitter at okay. Cyril Motier or using my well. There is a about page on my website, okay. sermotier.com, okay. where they can find uh, my email address, basically. Okay. And I'm always happy to answer questions. Excellent. Fantastic. It's, it's, it's so great meeting you in person. Thank you so much, and I hope you have like a good I.O. And thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye. Well, I'm Philip Simpson. You might have heard of me before. <laughs> I think I was on the last podcast, maybe, okay. the one before. So I'm uh, the co-founder at Shifty Jelly, which we do pocket casts, and I'm also an Android developer. Sweet. Yeah, and I'm Russell, also from Shifty Jelly, but uh, Kaushik has not invited me on his podcast. So <laughs> you, only, you only get to hear me here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I mean, the next podcast, I mean, you're... you're yeah, yeah, of yeah. course, of course. <laughs> okay, so what was the most exciting announcement that you guys heard today at I.O.? I think for me, it was a pretty lame one. It was the permissions thing. I've been wanting that for so long. I've been hassling so many Google engineers about it, and they kept telling me it's coming, it's coming, and now it's finally here. So I want to be able to install Facebook and just turn off almost every single permission. <laughs> it's the best. Yeah. I think for me, it was the design support library. Like, we've been doing kind of custom components ourselves, and just mm -hmm. to be able to, for Google to do it for us and do it the right way, probably. Yeah. Um, that was, yeah, it's brilliant to have them. So uh, what was one announcement that you thought, or like you were hoping would get announced at I.O., but wasn't? I thought maybe something like Oculus Rift, like VR, like headset oh, yeah. thing, but no, unfortunately not. They kept hyping it up, and I thought right at the end they're going to announce it. with the cardboard? I mean, like it's amazing. Well, it's, it's advanced like cardboard. It's slightly bigger <laughs> cardboard. No, yeah. <laughs> just more more immersive. Maybe VR would be good, where you could maybe walk around. That would be mm -hmm. great. Um, but no, just another cardboard. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> I think I typed it out myself, so I was excited for something that didn't come out. <laughs> Fair enough. I think mine's actually the same. So Philip and I, for those that were at our, at the very start, they had all this 3D like video and they had mm-hmm. things, you know, they had this immersive like yeah. surround screen. We're like, oh, they're going to announce yeah, it was like, pretty fancy. some yeah. really like fancy headset or something mm-hmm. like, you know, like HoloLens or something like that. Mm-hmm. And in the end, yeah, it was cardboard yeah. version two. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like, when, as we entered in, there was also like the trials for like, like, full, like there was like a full on like VR set that looked like very similar to like an Oculus yeah. thing. I'm like, oh yeah, this time like it's an upgrade. Like, no, more cardboard they're like no you get cardboard 2.0 that's it not, not only that but i hate to sound precious but it's like you, you get free like cool giveaways at own. i'm like yes free goodies and i'm sitting there and i'm like thinking like yeah headset of some kind this is gonna be amazing i'll take it back to the office shot to everyone and they also just gave us cardboard I'm like oh. yeah <laughs> they did give us a nexus 9 but yeah okay. i didn't find which that is, until later though which is good if you haven't got one but if you've got one already it's not so good. <laughs> now, now you sound like a press. Yeah, yeah. Like, come on, man. It's for free. Yeah, I've got a Nexus 9. Can I have an S6 or something instead? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So here's, uh, like, this is to get to know, like, the kind of apps that you guys use. Assuming Google sort of, like, shipped this crazy update where they said, like, okay, you're now allowed only three apps on your phone. Which three apps would you pick? I think Slack would have to be one of it. One of them. Uh-huh. Um... Falcon Pro is another one. Oh, okay. And what other one would I have? I don't know. Pocket Casts? Oh. <laughs> What's that? Have you heard of, have no. you heard of them? Oh, I don't know. No, it's quite I a mean, good app. You should try it. It's a good it, name, maybe. though. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to pick those exact same three apps, so now they're going to pick slightly different. So I would honestly install Pocket Cast first, and if Pocket Cast didn't exist, I'd just find some other kind of podcast player. Can't live without those. So uh, am I allowed Google Apps? Like, is Inbox already there? Inbox, Inbox is All right, good. so I would install Inbox because I, okay. I just love that app in unnatural ways. It's just, it's, it's good. Interesting. Yeah. Are you I, guys like stoked about the whole like NLP, like essentially they know everything about you? I mean, oh, what was that called? Google on tap or something? Oh is yeah, it? Google on tap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, one more app. I'd probably install Sync Pro. I'm a bit of a mm-hmm. closet Reddit reader. Okay, so assuming you're building like a new app, right? Like a completely new app from scratch. And you were allowed only like three dependencies to pull inside this app. Which three dependencies, like third-party libraries, would you sort of pull? I think for a new one, um, I'd be keen to try Realm. So we haven't Realm. used Realm. We've used like SQLite and Fast. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that one really interests, interests me. Mm-hmm. Kind of just the speed and the new... In fact, it's a new, something new, and people seem to talk about it quite highly. Mm-hmm. Uh, would be one. Um, it, it's hard now because they've just announced the fact that this the design support library right. so a lot of our libraries were based off that so oh interesting okay yeah 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 so that would that rules out about six of my libraries i think okay. i'm I able to go and change <laughs> um, i'm not sure what else um what else would we have in this picasso picasso definitely yes mm-hmm. so from the guys at square that's right. amazing okay just saves you so much work um just loading images and the whole hassle just gets rid of that one and what other ones do we use I don't know when when Phil so Phil sets up all our Android projects. I don't, I'm not allowed to do that, and then Phil won't let me install any dependencies. <laughs> they have to go through the Philip filter before they're accepted oh, yeah. into the project. I'm just really cautious in case it kind of anything breaks. <laughs> There's a few retrofits people have been talking about a lot, right. which mm-hmm. seems like a really good one to use. So mm-hmm. maybe retrofit. I'd yeah. try it as well. And yeah, the method limit is also another problem, right? That's why you don't want to like, keep adding like libraries left and right. You, yeah. you never yeah. know when you're going to hit like... Pocket Cast only has one main method though, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Play, that's it. <laughs> so if Google came to you, right, and said, okay, you are granted this one wish. We allow you to change one thing in Android. What is like the one thing that you would change? Well, I think maybe it's great you can customize like the launcher. So maybe the notification shared, if you could change that, so... It wasn't mm-hmm. Samsung's one. Okay. <laughs> um, that'd be amazing, just so you could do your own design for it and maybe even if Google could bring their own one out again, that would be... That's probably one main thing with the OS. Interesting. Um, I guess, yeah, maybe just uh, customising the whole OS a bit more. Obviously, it's it's mm-hmm. way better than some um, systems, right. um, some platforms, but yeah, I think that's they're, get, they're getting to a point now where it doesn't matter what device you buy because it used to be if you bought... a uh, like a Samsung or HTC, you have to live with whatever's there. Mm-hmm. And it's getting better. I think they could just improve that even more, um, like with the settings as well. If you could change the settings and how that looked. Because um, if you use multiple devices, it can be quite confusing to go into the settings on a different device mm-hmm. and try and hunt out um, what you're looking for. All right. So going back to Google I.O., like, do you meet any cool person or people? Yeah, we got to uh, shake hands with Matthias Duarte. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was definitely a <laughs> 
Okay, got, and uh, yeah, I, I, oh, can, I don't can, think. Can we bring something physical onto the podcast? Sure. Can, <laughs> can, can your listeners hear that? Oh yeah. Yeah. This is like a video podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'll, I'll post a picture of this. So like for the listeners who obviously like probably didn't see it, like there was this uh, session called Material Now. Huh. They yeah they got the award uh, from yeah the one and only right Matthias Duarte. So that I mean. This is amazing. I mean, obviously everyone knows it's like well deserved, but this is like really amazing to get it like from him, like especially like the recognition that like, you guys have been kicking butt and yeah, well deserved. Amazing. Congratulations the, on that. The fact that he was talking about us on stage kind of was amazing. Just made me feel kind of yeah proud that we'd actually. But we've obviously spent like six months doing it, mm-hmm. more trying to get the material design in stuff in. So for him to talk about it was yeah mm-hmm. amazing. It goes to show, like how like they do recognize good work, right? I mean, I remember even last IO, you guys like were like you were, like you, like you were featured in like in one of the slides. I remember like in the keynote slides, right? Yeah, They're with probably... the Android Auto, it was last year. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to top this next year. We're going to have to uh, get Larry and Sergey on stage or something. I know. (laughs) Get them to like personally hand hand over something. Yeah. I'd be like a Lamborghini just if you're listening, Larry. (laughs) Lamborghini, please. With Android Auto. I I can can justify that, right? Yeah. (laughs) So you guys have been to a couple of uh, IOs at this point, right? What's like the craziest thing that you've seen or heard at IO? Oh, I reckon the very first I I came to, the craziest thing was seeing the amount of people with Google Glass. Really? We were standing in the keynote line, there's just glass everywhere. And some, some of the Google Glass is obviously running out of battery, so there's people with USB mm-hmm. cords running from the top of their heads, like into their pockets or into their backpacks. Wow. It was like, I felt like I was on some cyborg movie or something. <laughs> Maybe in the future. Not a really pleasant future. Thing. Well, this year has died off, I think. There's not so many people. I saw maybe not two or three when I was in the queue, so... There was no mention of like Google Glass at all, right? No, they were no. like, please forget that product never <laughs> existed. Like, <laughs> I have a feeling it'll be back someday in some form, but they're probably yeah. not going to announce it until like it's ready. Cold yeah. free. Uh, all right, and this is like a last question. So you guys use Android Studio, I presume, like for Android. Are you, do you use like a light theme or a dark theme? <laughs> We've got the complete opposites here. We and Russell. Yeah, hey, see if we can guess which one uses which. Ah, <laughs> oh, interesting. So I, I don't know. I. Is, does Philip use like a light theme? Oh no! No, no what? <laughs> no, Philip is all about the dark. All about the dark. Well, so I tried to cheat a little because I remember you uh, like sharing a screenshot or something of your monitor, and I remember yeah, seeing yeah. a lot of white there. Oh, was that like a placement? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> dark theme. It's trying to put you off. Oh yeah. It, it's hard when we go to each other's computers because it would be like a completely different screen. And it's like what? <laughs> what? I can't see like, anything. I need, to wear, I need to wear like some shades or something, man. It's yeah, like too bright. Yeah. Of course, you have a new screen. I can't read any of the text. It's like, <laughs> so dark. But, you know, turn it up. I can't see this. I'm getting old. So yeah, Ooh. that's a massive division. It's, it could one day be the end of Shifty Jelly. You know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you use? So you're the third person here. This is the decision. Uh, this? I've got a very diplomatic answer here, but yeah. like it's also like so. I was a dark like theme person for a very long time, yeah. but very recently I've switched to a light theme. So would you say you uh, saw the light? Yeah, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> there you go. Two to one. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave. It's fine. Now, if any of you got feedback, email uh, Kaushik at probablygmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> nice okay thank you so much guys uh, if people want to reach out to you like they know how to reach out to Philip but like why don't you like tell them again <laughs> yeah so at Geeky Gecko on Twitter and pocketcast.com is a website okay sweet and you Rusty yeah so same website and Rusty Shelf on Twitter amazing thank you so much guys congratulations again for like a well deserved award and hope to see you guys again next time thank you thank you very much hi uh, my name is Amanda uh, Amanda Hill I work at Venmo on the Android team oh cool so, uh, do you listen to the Fragmented Podcast? I haven't yet. Okay, so the tradition is if you're from like any team that does like anything related to finance, you give like a free coupon, so like 100 bucks every listener. Uh, so, I, do you have like a special coupon for us? I don't. I apologize. <laughs> um, we're not really, I mean, we're a payments app, but we are peer-to-peer, so okay. <laughs> I, I could send you money or you could send me money, but that's about it. That works. <laughs> Excellent. So... Amanda, what was like the coolest thing that you like the coolest announcement that you've heard at IO so far? Um, I really like the data binding. I think that'll clean up, oh, okay. um, especially our code base, just a lot. <laughs> okay. um, I'm hesitant to, you know, kind of remove the controller aspect of model view, but I think for some things that are really static and unchanging, that can just make things really, really cool. Okay, pretty sweet. Is there like an announcement that you wished was that Google could have made at IO, but? hadn't been made <laughs> so we are uh, one of the um, we were one of the partners who paired with Google on the fingerprint sensor for Fantastic. Venmo okay. um, and we were hoping to get announced at the keynote so I guess that's my kind of uh, sadness but ooh, 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 ooh. exactly <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay 
Uh, okay, so here's like a, this is just to get like a better feel of like you know like the kind of apps that you use. Mm -hmm. Assuming Google shipped this crazy update where like you're allowed only three apps mm -hmm. to be installed on your phone, which yeah. three apps would you pick? Um, I think you have to go with an email app, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's Inbox or Gmail. Um, I'd probably go with Inbox um, just because that's the one I use for my personal, so you definitely need that. Um, I'd have to say Twitter um, mm -hmm. because that's how I read news and find out about things in the world. Okay. Um, and, you know, the last one is tricky, but again, it's probably another communication one, so Slack. Slack? Yeah. Okay. Pretty cool. So... If you were building like this new app like from scratch mm -hmm. and you were allowed only three dependencies, right? Mm -hmm. Like in your project, which three would you pick? Assuming like the support yes. library, all that is like for free. Gotcha. Um, I'd have to go with um, RX Java. Ooh, um, nice. Really big. Good choice. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, really big fan. Um, I would. Next up, probably Retro Lambdas because that makes oh, RX Java even yeah. cleaner. Mm -hmm. um, so if I had to write code and I was starting it from scratch and want it to be clean. Mm -hmm. um, and then either a testing dependency or um, an HTTP dependency. So something okay. like retrofit or right. something along those lines. Awesome. Uh, okay. And if Google came to you and said, hey, Amanda, there is, like, we give you this free card. There's one thing that you can change about Android, right? Mm -hmm. Which one would you pick? Um, the keyboard. The um, oh. I think the keyboard is the worst thing about Android <laughs> phones. Um, when you compare it to iOS, the animations for it, it comes in and out randomly. Um, you just have no control over it, and it's awful. It's my least favorite thing. <laughs> have you worked on iOS before? Uh, no. Okay. But I had an iPhone in a previous life. Okay, okay. Because if you said yes, then I'd have like, cut the video short. And then <laughs> yeah, like, no. no, no. Abort, abort. No, 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 no. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> What's the craziest thing that you've seen or heard so far at I.O.? So, I wasn't here yesterday um, okay. because I was at work, but... Um, what? I know. God. <laughs> okay. uh, but um, this morning, I went to um, the pay talk, and um, mm -hmm. they talked about loyalty rewards. So, it's mm -hmm. not quite the craziest thing, but it is a clever addition to, I think, the payments platform that they're building yeah, out. That, yeah, that wasn't, like, flushed out uh, too much in the keynote. Yeah, um, okay. but it's kind of... It's a nice, easy thing, and it's the API is incredibly simple. So, if you wanted to wow. add any sort of rewards mm -hmm. to any... Android Pay scenario, um, they've taken care of all of it. So, nice. okay. And lastly, and the most important question: mm -hmm. When you use Android Studio, do yeah. you use like a dark theme or a light theme? I'm light. What? I am yeah. a white person all nice, the way. Nice. Um, yeah, my uh, one of my ex coworkers um, was dark, and okay. he and I pairing was never easy. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much for your time. You're Amanda. so welcome. Thank you. Uh, if our listeners want to like, get in touch with like, the stuff that you do, online, website? Uh, yeah. Um, my Twitter handle is the best way to reach me. I am Mandy Bess, like Amanda, but Mandy. Um, Bess, B-E-S-S. Excellent. Thank you so much awesome. for your time. Thank you. you. You're very welcome. Dial. You too. My name is Dave Smith. I am the Android lead at New Circle, uh, which is a training organization. So I'm responsible for building Android courseware and teaching other Android developers how to get better at what they do. I watched a couple of your courses, and you're amazing. Thank you. Thanks Appreciate for the that. amazing work you put out. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, Dave, what was like the coolest announcement you thought that they made at I.O. this time? Well, I'm an embedded guy, and my background is uh, electrical engineering and really low-level stuff. So I was really excited that they're starting to get more into the Internet of Things space. Okay. And so the, the concept of what Project Brillo can be, uh, mm -hmm. I think is going to be really cool. I'm, I'm sad we didn't get to see more of it, right. um, but I think, uh, you know, following where they're going to go with that, it's a really cool idea. Um, you know, they're, from a communications perspective, they're doing kind of the same thing that Apple did with HomeKit. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, if you look at the protocols, which, you know, Google has Weave and Apple has their HomeKit protocol, they're, they're almost identical. I mean, they're doing essentially the same thing there. Right. But Google took it to the next level, which I thought was really cool, and that is that they're going to also provide embedded development with a software stack. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on, on the Apple side, they basically say, here's the protocol that our devices will recognize. Right. Uh, you go figure out the rest, right. which is fine. Yeah. Um, but Google's going to say, you can do that too if you'd like, right. and our devices will recognize what we can do. Right. But if you don't want to get into developing a complete software stack for your embedded system, right. here's Brillo. Nice. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's not really Android, but yeah. if you're familiar with the Android it's internals inspired, at all, yeah. um, you know, a lot of those things will be familiar to you. So it's not just starting from the ground up. So Makes I think that's going to be really cool. Nice. Makes sense. So uh, were there any un announcements that you were hoping Google would make at I.O. that they didn't end up making? Not really. Okay. Um, you know, I, I knew that 
after after Lollipop being such a huge release that uh, I was actually kind of hoping that they wouldn't release too much. Nice. Um, okay. And you know, and kind of I guess in my mind, assuming that if I just think that way, it won't happen. But so I was very pleased with the announcements and the fact that we got more of a a stability mm-hmm. sort of uh, cleaning house type release. Um, you know, and of course the Internet of Things was kind of prefaced right. ahead of time, so right. they, that came right out, and I was good with that. They so. allowed us to at least like make sure we get some good night's sleep. Like, yeah, exactly, right? exactly. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, okay, if Google shipped like this crazy update where they said like, okay, there are only three apps, like you're allowed to install only three apps on your phone, mm-hmm. which three apps would you pick? Mm, that's a good question. Um, Pocket Casts, oh yeah, for sure. Um, right. You know, I, I've. I've relied on that app for years to keep right. me entertained as I go from place to place <laughs> and if I can yeah. if it's the only thing that I have available right. to me then I definitely want yeah. to keep that uh, Google Plus uh, for mm-hmm. sure I am I am entrenched in that social network <laughs> and you know work, I work remote so I, mm. uh, I it's in a lot of cases that's the only social interaction I can get right. uh, <laughs> a lot of cases so I'm a huge Google Plus fan okay. um, and then Path uh, oh, you know, I, I am not a super huge fan of Facebook, and okay. so a, a number of years ago, I was able to get all my family members to kind of move away from oh, there and into into you going to Path <laughs> okay. uh, because it's just it's much simpler for them and all that. And I just I really love the design and stuff that they've done. So I, I would have to keep that there just so I can stay connected. Makes sense. If if Google came to you and said, like, "Hey, Dave, you're allowed to change one thing in Android," what would it, that or what, what, what would you go and change? Hmm. Um, I think it would be the delineation between what is Android and what is Google. Um, Interesting. In a lot of cases, oh, okay. I can see why they do things the way they do. You know, there was a when Google Play services first came around, there was a bit of an uproar around. Well, mm. you know, what are they putting open source in the platform yeah. versus keeping sort of closed source for themselves? And I mean, it made perfect sense because anything they're doing is tied to their servers, their APIs, or services, all that stuff. So I understand the reasoning for it. But at the same time, I spend a lot of time on the Android embedded side and working with people who are responsible for putting Android in not phones or tablets mm-hmm. or just porting. Android. And it, anything that I can get from them in terms of, we're going to put this in the core system where it's open source, where anybody can use it, even if this, this device has nothing to do with a phone or tablet or any, any mobile device of any kind that would have Google services on it. Um, so it's more of a, it's a wish that I know will never come true uh, because there are business reasons for that. But at the same time, I, anything that I can get out of Google's closed source and into the open source makes me happy. So speaking about I.O., like, what's like the craziest thing that you've seen or heard here at I.O.? So it kind of goes along with the M release. And okay. I was fishing through some of the documentation, mm-hmm. and I noticed that uh, in the previous release of Android, they had deprecated all of the Apache HTTP, right. <laughs> uh, which makes sense that for a number of versions they've been saying, please don't use this. Yeah. But the thing that shocked me is in Android M, they went straight from deprecation to removal. Oh, the entire okay. Android HTTP stack is gone from the M APIs. Which could be a good thing, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely the right move, and yeah. it makes sense. But as far as I know, that is the only deprecated API that has ever gone to the point of actually getting pulled. Right, right. And they did it in one version. Nice. Ripped out the entire set of packages. Yeah. So I, I just that struck me as really strange. There right. must have been a really, really significant reason why they said, okay, we're going we're gonna to do this right yeah. away. I would have loved to be in that conversation that happened at Google, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Do it. <laughs> yeah, and it's weird because I mean it does still work. Yeah, um, yeah. you know, you, if you have a, like, it's not going to break your legacy app or anything like that. But um, if you if you move forward and try to do that, it's just not even going to compile. Makes so sense. very interesting. Mm-hmm. Cool. And the last and probably the most important question: When you use Android Studio. Are you a dark or light theme person? Dark theme. Dark theme? For sure. Okay. I work a lot at night in bed with my wife sleeping next to me. And if my screen is white and bright, oh, yeah. she calls me the glow worm. She says she can't sleep. So anything that I can do to darken the screen usually makes me more productive and her more happy. Excellent. Thank you so much for your time. If our listeners want to reach out to you and see like the work that you've uh, pushed out for the community, like what are the best places they can Sure. Uh, so I'm on Twitter uh, quite a bit. My handle is at Devon Wired. Okay. Um, I'm also on Google+. Uh, Dave Smith was apparently taken, so my plus <laughs> handle is Dave Smith Dev. Okay. Um, Maybe there's more than one Dave Smith in the world. More descriptive as well. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, all of our the videos that I've done and tutorials are going to be on our website, newcircle.com. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. 
Hi, uh, my name is Corey Ladislaw. I currently work at Capital One. I am um, at the moment a manager of a sprint team of Android developers, but I'm also the interim QE lead, so I'm running the entire QE organization. So, what's the most exciting announcement you thought Google made at I.O. this time? So a lot of it was interesting. I'm really interested in the developing nations. I basically want to disappear to the third world and help everybody you know, bring up their tech acumen. Um, so anything in the ATAP program was really cool. All the fabrics, all the, um, well, Project Aria, of course, as well, like plug and play bits of a phone. Um, also, it didn't sound very sexy in the talk, but the offlining of video content uh, for YouTube, um, just making everything faster and working better for lower powered phones. Nice. Were there any announcement or like was, was there a single announcement that you were hoping Google would make at I.O. that they didn't? I was hoping to hear something about Glass 2 because I spent a bunch of money on Glass 1 <laughs> and I don't know where that's going to go. Uh, okay. There's too much social friction though for that. Okay. Basically, I wore it for a month and people just ask me questions constantly. Okay. <laughs> uh, the only use case that's valuable for me is taking pictures at events and then also people come talk to me if I'm wearing one because I look weird. <laughs> okay, so assuming Google shipped this like weird update, right? Like sort of a deserted island update where... Essentially, they say you can install only three apps on your phone. Which uh, three apps would you pick? So, um, Chrome's kind of cheating, but it gives me access to basically any app I can't have installed if they have a mobile web version. Okay. Uh, so that's one. Uh, Twitter, because I'm pretty involved on Twitter and like to um, share content and meet people. Um, and then, I guess a camera too, because I probably wouldn't have a camera with me okay. on this deserted island. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, okay, cool. Speaking more about development, if if you were building a brand new app and you were allowed to pull in only three external dependencies, assuming the support library, you get all that for free. What are three dependencies? What are the three dependencies that you would pick? So I'd start with RoboElectric because I'm uh, into TDD and that's basically required. One day, hopefully, Android will truly support it. Not right now. They're getting there. Um, let's see. I guess it really depends on your use case. Um, so there's a lot of different things I would pull in for different reasons. But if I was doing an imaging app, I guess it would be Picasa. Um, basically, anything that fits my use case will be the answer for number three. Okay. If Google came to you and said, like, hey, Corey, we have given you complete power. You can change one thing in Android. What would that one thing be? Uh testing support <laughs> unit testing good TDD choice. yeah good choice. I am so frustrated with it I I wrote a book I don't nobody should have to read or write a book to figure <laughs> out how to integrate a tool that lets you test while you're writing apps it's ridiculous <laughs> all right cool so this is your second IO I believe yes so in both of the IOs like did you meet any cool people? Who are the coolest people you've met so far? So I'm also a GDG organizer for Philadelphia. So like, there's the um, GDG Global Summit, the two days before I.O. and then the I.O. So, I mean, actually, there's tons of people. This year's kind of crazy because basically everyone I've ever met at a conference ever or okay. on social media is here. Nice. So I feel like every five feet I'm running into someone I know or have met on the Internet. So no one specific person, but there's a lot of great people here. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, Okay, so what's the craziest thing that you've seen or like heard or you've seen someone do at I.O.? Um, so the ATAP talk this morning was pretty awesome. Okay. Um, so they went through um, capacitive fabrics. Yeah. Um, using your fingers yeah. with uh, radar is okay. basically how to <laughs> control your wearable device. So that was pretty awesome. And then um, they now have a story development kit and then they show this like interactive video that took up the whole room and you didn't know exactly where to watch it. It was pretty cool. And then um, also obviously the Aura. Uh, I really like the plug and play mobile device. Okay. Cool. Uh, so crazy good. That's good. Yeah. I like it. Okay. And this is probably the most important question that I ask everyone. You use Android Studio, so are you a dark or a light theme person? So uh, I'm currently in light theme, but I like Darkula better. Oh. I just haven't switched it over on my work computer, but my home computer is Darkula, so I've got both at the moment. What? Okay. <laughs> but my terminal is black okay, with yeah. green text. You know, I had the same feeling. I mean, I, I've always been a big problem of the dark theme, but I've recently switched to the light theme, and I'm exploring, and I actually like it, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much, Corey, for your time. If our listeners want to reach out to you, or if 
basically we want to find out like the cool stuff about your book where is the best place we can do that cool so I have a website CoreyLattislaw.com um, also I'm on Twitter so you can interact with me there I'm on all the social networks but uh, that's a good starting point excellent thank you so much for your time have a thank good you. IO thanks I'm Chet Haas I work on the Android team at Google nice uh, so what many people don't know is you're an accomplished author and a marginally decent developer, but more importantly, a very good author. So can you tell us what the name of your last book was? Uh, the last book, um, uh, on its way to becoming a bestseller, I'm sure, is called Round and Holy, An Homage to Donuts. Nice. Uh, it's a, a book of poems to and about donuts. Excellent. Uh, is, is, it, is it a read I can take like on the flight or something? Is it like a pleasant read? I think so. It, it's meant to, to occupy your time for a long time. So you can certainly take it on the plane to read, but you may not you know, finish it on that flight or the next flight. I, I think okay. it'll, it'll take you probably through um, your waning years. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. So if Tor Nurby uh, came in and walked in on us right now, what would you say? I would say, hi, Tor. Okay. And he would be cool with that? Uh, well, he probably wouldn't recognize me, but I recognize him. I'm a big fan. Oh, okay. <laughs> Excellent. So, we've noticed that uh, Romain Guy isn't around here. What did you tell Romain Guy? It was your fault. It was clearly your fault. So, what did you tell him? I, it was... Um it was kind of a coup, actually. It was sort of a bloodless coup, um, okay. so that I could, you know, take over more responsibility of the things that that uh, he was doing before. Okay. Um, so yeah, yeah, it was it was kind of a combination of, of a coup and sort of a, an uncomfortable and awkward um, personality conflict. I mean, I think it's pretty clear from anybody that's seen us in the past years how uncomfortable we are in each other's presence. Okay. Uh, it's I mean, it's come so close to fisticuffs on so many occasions. Okay. Okay, cool. And these are all standard questions I've been asking all our developers. And this is basically the last question. It's the exact same question. I, I kid you not. I'm a, I've been asking these questions to everyone else. How many times have you been mistaken for Anderson Cooper? Um, by Anderson Cooper's mother only a couple of times. Uh, by everyone else not as frequently. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chad. My name is Chuki Chen, and surprise, I'm an Android developer. <laughs> and right now, I'm freelancing, meaning that I go to different companies, and I usually build the version one of the Android app for them. And so far, the trend is startups, they will have an iOS app, and then the users bang on the door, really want an uh, Android version, and then they scramble to find someone to do it, and I raise my hand, and then <laughs> they bring me in. So that's what I've been doing so far in the, in the past two, three years. Yeah. Many Android developers have had that story, so like, <laughs> we feel you completely. Okay, yeah. so uh, what's the most exciting announcement uh, you've heard uh, in this I.O. so far that Google have made? It's actually not Android, something else. I don't know. This morning there was this talk from the ATAP team, mm -hmm. and it's just so futuristic what they're doing. Um, the thing that really, really impressed me was that they are using laser mm -hmm. to detect finger gestures. So uh, it's a little bit hard to explain in audio, but imagine you put your thumb on your index finger and you slide it left and right, and that is how you control a slider on your watch. So instead of fumbling on the watch, you actually get that feedback from your index finger of your thumb doing stuff to it, and it's really precise, at least the demo they were showing. Um, they were also having some other gesture like pinching and things like that, and it just blew my mind. I mean, first of all, how, like, who come up with the idea of using radar for that, and then how do you make a radar so small that you can use as a wearable? Just everything put together, um, and it's just very exciting. Uh, I have no idea how practical these things are, but I feel like we need people imagining things and trying them now, and that's just really inspirational. I love how, like, this time when they meant wearable, like, they actually literally meant wearable, like, it's actually, like, suits Fabric. and clothes. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, is there any announcement you were hoping Google would have made in this I.O., but they didn't plan up making? That's a good question. I've been just so kind of crazily running around, <laughs> seeing what's there. Yeah. Like, to be honest, I don't, I don't remember if <laughs> there was something that I was really like, holding my breath for. Okay. I just kept breathing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So this is like more of like a question about like you and your preference in the apps. If Google shipped this crazy update that basically like said you're allowed to install only three apps on your phone like you can pick only three apps to be installed on your phone which three apps would you pick three mm -hmm. 
Mm, that's tricky. Because I'm thinking the, the apps that I use the most, which are communication apps. Okay, okay. And since I work with clients, I have so many of them. <laughs> they're just like, they, they each prefer their yeah. own method of right, communication. Right. I mean, I guess Gmail will be the one thing I will be using because I can turn Safe on notification place. for all of them so that at least they email me and right. then I can, if I like, see an emergency, mm-hmm. I will... Is phone an app? Because I want my phone to be able to make phone calls. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right. So I don't want that to be an app. I want it to be a freebie. Okay. Um, okay. Right? Because I get the email, and if I need to get back to them, probably okay. the best will be call them up. Okay. Um, and then now I'm like, okay, should I spend my quota on something fun, or should I spend quota on something that's... I would say maps, actually. Maps? Okay. Yeah, because... I mean, it's, it's very basic stuff, but if you constrain me that much, I <laughs> do not want to get lost, yeah. and I think maps will be something that's also important so I guess phone maps and, and Gmail a bit boring but essential no no I mean people who know me know like my sense of direction is terrible like uh-huh. even if I have to like drive home sometimes I need maps <laughs> wow so, okay I, I know how to drive home yeah. but yeah <laughs> if you were building a new Android application uh-huh. and you were allowed only three dependencies in your application right which three dependencies would you use as you mean get like the support library all those for free you don't yeah what are three external libraries that you would pick I sense a theme here. <laughs> you really like this. Constrain yourself down to three yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, how you like draw the best, right? <laughs> well, I don't know if th- maybe maybe it's slightly less boring, but retrofit. If I'm talking to the to the server, okay. just because it's such a tight package of things that I need, mm-hmm. right? Because things come down the wire, then you have to translate it into Pojo. I was like, oh, it does that yeah. already. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's a no-brainer. The rest, it really depends on like, what I'm building. Okay. I mean, so far, I don't really have any blanket thing that it's like retrofit. Okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure whatever I build, I'll need the internet. Okay. So I'll use retrofit for the internet. Okay. Um, does Espresso count? Yeah, sure. Is that a library? Yeah, Espresso would be a library, I guess. Okay. Oh, well, it does come with the support test. Exactly. Now, so, so, like, so like for free, I guess. yeah, I, I mean, I, I like using that just because um, sometimes when I work with a team, like their server may not be ready, so like Excel will allow me to right. test things in a way that is independent of the outside. Um, one, it's not necessarily Expresso, but like I can test the UI repeatedly right. and with mock data, and that gives me a lot of confidence in my apps. Okay. But that's uh, yeah, I guess that's come with the support library. Maybe I should just turn the question back to you for some inspiration. Okay. So tell me even more constrained, one library, but not retrofit oh, that you will that you will use. Minute. So, not not Alex Java. That's oh, come on. I, I knew you would say that. So I, I, I want good. to constrain you way I more. My, I had my answer like ready. I'm like, so, okay. If I, you I ask saw me, that coming. Me. I saw that coming. <laughs> not Alex Java. Not retrofit. Okay. Uh, See, it's hard. Well, I mean, so I, I work. <laughs> it is hard. I mean, that's why I'm, that's why it's like convenient to ask other people the question. <laughs> I mean, so I work in a wedding app. So because like uh, because of that, I have to deal a lot with images. Okay. So I would pick a good image library. So like. Picasso would be a very good okay. start for me. So I would. All right, that's a good answer. <laughs> I totally just like I don't want to answer yeah, this question. I'm so I'm politician. I'm like, why don't you answer the question <laughs> instead? Uh, good call, good call. That's the first time someone has done that to me in the interview. So yeah, nice call. Though. Okay, uh, what's the craziest thing you've either done or heard at an I/O? Besides the touch thing I just described yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Craziest thing. Um, I was trying to. Well, first of all, what. I was really impressed with was okay. just the setup. Like the keynote right. setup was amazing. It was kind of like a 360 screen. Exactly. I don't know if it's 360. Actually. I don't know if they go all the way back. Well, yeah. But I mean, yeah. 270. Yeah, 270. <laughs> right? And, and they do it really well, just like they use that form factor really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I would say like it's not like mind-blowingly, oh my God, like this is going to change the world kind right, of thing. Right, right. But like overall, they did a lot of good design things here. Like a lot mm. of tactile stuff. And yeah, um, yeah. they had like on the second floor, there's this kind of play area yeah. where um, this is like chair that looks like cardboard put together, but then you can mm. actually sit on it. Right. And it was just it's like so playful that it's yeah. just a joy to be around this space. So I, like, it's not a particular announcement because I feel like I already used that quota yeah, for yeah. the textile <laughs> thing. But I, I think overall, the, the ambience was really nice this time. And, and the screen, I mean, the screen was just yeah. amazing. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay, so the last question, probably the most important question in all okay. of these. You use Android Studio. Yes. Do you use a light theme or a dark theme? Hey, that's a second question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I tend to use whatever that's the default because okay. I teach a lot. Oh, um, right, right. So okay. I don't want to... Um, so I, like, for example, I do screencasting for... Right. Uh, I, I put it on ProSize, so, which mm-hmm. is uh, like... Uh, 
a place where you can go and watch me code essentially and pick up yeah. a lot of times subtle things. Like I may be typing and saying that, and now I'm going to use this function, but then yeah. you can see me do like subtle one. things yeah. that you yeah. pick up. So I tend to keep everything on default. So okay. the default is light, so I just right, go with right. light so that people who are watching the video don't have the extra step to... Okay. Like when they want to translate yeah. that into their day to day, so right. I'm just boring like that. No, but no. makes sense. Yeah. I, I know many people, like even Don, uh-huh. like he does the same thing because he teaches as well and does a lot yeah, of stuff. Maybe, so maybe keeps, it's, a, it's a teaching he, thing. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. Keeps people. I'm on yeah. the other end of the spectrum. I customize it like crazy. Like I have like weird things. If people come and like see, they're like, "Are you using Android Studio?" Right. Like, I make it look like you so have weird. unicorns and rainbows. Yeah. And <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got, yeah, it's got to match my like you know personality, right? Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I keep that as close to. Out of the box as possible. I don't think. I think like I change a little bit of the key binding just because I use Linux and some of them okay. clashes, but yeah. that's not visible. Okay, yeah. So yeah, it's not a big deal. Thank you so yeah. much for your time. If our listeners want to basically reach out to you and like see some of the content that you post, uh, I mean, I know obviously I read your blog you know, <laughs> pretty regularly. So what's the best place that people can reach out? Twitter to? is the easiest. Mm-hmm. I I tend to share the link to my blog okay. post there as well. Okay. Uh, so my Twitter handle is Chuki. That's C H I U K I. Okay. Thank you so much, Chiki. Hope you yeah. have like a great I.O. All right then. Bye. Bye. I'm Elliot Chenger. I work at uh, Under Armour with the uh, wearables and, and core SDK team um, and uh, live in Austin, Texas. What was like the most exciting announcement that you heard at I.O. this time? Yeah, I think for me, a lot of it was build tool related. So like that 1.3 Canary build for, for Android Studio, mm-hmm. um, I think that's kind of the cool stuff that I'm looking forward to. And then I think aside from that, the permissions for M right. are really exciting. Sounds good. Uh, it, it, were there any announcements that you were hoping Google would make but didn't at this I.O.? Yeah, I was hoping for maybe a, another Wear update um, mm-hmm. and to see some more functionality. And as well, to be honest, I was actually really hoping for the Wear on iOS uh, to, to see that support come through. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that will be a that will be an interesting kind of uh, power play on Google's part if they were able okay. to get Wear on on Apple. Mm. So interesting. Uh, Okay, so this is just like to get an idea about like the kind of apps that you use and you find interesting. Assuming Google like sort of like shipped this crazy update where they say, okay, you're allowed only three apps. You're allowed to install only three apps on your phone. Which which would you pick? That's a tough one. Uh, my my wife says I have way too many apps on my phone, so I, <laughs> I've, I've got hundreds to pick from. Um, Feedly definitely. I think Feedly and Pocket are probably two of my favorites. So okay. I'd, one of those two, okay. just so I have my reading taken care of. Okay. And I really like Inbox. Uh, okay. I think it's helped me manage my my mm-hmm. email nightmare that right. I have. Um, and then on top of that, can I say where? And then I get my my wear device as yeah, well. Yeah, sure, sure, then I'll go with that because okay. I've, I've, <laughs> my wear device has just become second nature to me. So excellent, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So if you're building like a new app from scratch, and this would be a wearable app as well, because uh, I mean I don't know too much about like wear stuff, yeah. but totally cool. Uh, if you were to pull only three external dependencies, right, for your app, which would they be? Which three dependencies would you pull? Man, that's another one. We use so many of the square libraries that... <laughs> I mean, I, so definitely, probably Dagger would be one of them. Okay. You know, having dependency management and uh, mm-hmm. dependency injection is a very awesome thing to have and helps big projects. Mm-hmm. Um, on top of that, let's see, a couple other SDKs. Oh, the app compat, like uh, the Google support stuff, they come for free. Take them for free, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, can, they'll, yeah. they'll just put us over the dex limit, so <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe not. No, um, no um, I don't want to get too square focused because I know that a lot of the stuff they make is amazing um, and definitely really helpful. But I'm trying to think of some ones that would be just kind of unique to this whole thing. I don't know. I think Stetho, Stetho would be pretty cool. That's an interesting one, and uh, probably giving them another another shout out because I really liked it. But Rebound is a really cool one for doing the oh, animation. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I think those would be two that would be another yeah. ones that I'd want to have. Yeah. yeah, I like Rebound a lot as well. Yeah. I think it's like it's a very pleasant. It's a very simple sort of aspect, but yeah. it's like a very pleasant yeah, sort of animation. Yeah, very amazing. Yeah, cool. Uh, if there was one thing, like suppose Google came to you and said, "Hey, Elliot, we give you the complete license to change one thing about Android. What would it be?" It would probably be in the Maps SDK. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we talked about this a little bit. I think right. the uh, getting some more, uh, you know, better events, uh, mm-hmm. better events from the Maps SDK the would be. Notifications only. Yeah, sort of understanding touch like events. touch events yeah. and things like that would be, I think, the big thing that I would add. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, 
this isn't your first IO, right? Like, so, yeah. like, in all the IOs, like, have have you met any, like, cool people or, like, uh, yeah, who's some, like, cool people you've met so far? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, you know, this is my third IO, and every time I come, I meet more people. Um, right. And I think it's interesting because, you know, like, we've met digitally before and then right. got to meet in person. Um, so, like, one of the people um, that lives in my own town, but I met him for the first I.O. Uh, that I was at was, like, Brian Griffey nice. and um, some people like that. But, uh, you know, generally, there's just so many people I couldn't pinpoint to one. Yeah. Uh, and especially this I.O., it was really nice to just be able to talk to everybody and, and get yeah. that, to yeah. see everybody, put names to faces and stuff right. like that. So, What's, like, the craziest thing that you've seen in the I.O.s that you've been here? The craziest things? that you've seen or either heard being done in the IOs? It's always, I think, the setup for IO is amazing <laughs> to me. Like the amount, the kind of pomp and circumstance. Right. They, they pull out all the stops to make things look and <laughs> feel very interactive. You know, like okay. Bob and Alice this year is just a really cool little, like, um, nice touch to add into, like, the whole Easter egg thing. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely the setups. I think they just... Says like keynote having that wraparound screen uh, was really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't understand the whale so much, but yeah. <laughs> it was cool. Yeah. It looked good. Yeah. So cool. So uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, what's the best way people can like sort of reach out to you, like if they want to see like the stuff that you've put out? Yeah. So uh, best ways to to kind of get in touch with me is on Twitter uh, mm-hmm. at e c h e n g e r, and then. Uh, otherwise, they can check out my blog at omitneedlesscode.com. Excellent. And we'll add all of those to the show notes. Cool. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great I.O. Appreciate it. Yeah. I'm Maria Neumeyer. Um, I'm an Android developer, like probably anybody else you're talking to. Okay. But, uh, well, I'm Android from, developers? Oh, probably in the wrong really? place. Yeah, I mean. No. <laughs> We're not doing that stuff. Yeah, I know. Uh, what does that mean? I yeah, know. I'm... Originally Austrian, but live in London. Uh, work at Cinemapper. Uh, is this your first I.O.? Uh, it's my fourth, actually. Fourth? Oh, perfect. Like, we got a veteran here. Then. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, what did you think was like the coolest announcement that was made at Google I.O. today? Uh, well, apparently I missed all the cool stuff today in the an, okay, unofficial right. second <laughs> keynote. <Right. laughs> uh, but from the real keynote, mm-hmm. I mean, one of the things probably most Android developers and probably also users were waiting for a long time was the uh, app permissions Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah I mean currently if you have like apps like Facebook that basically take everything that you have Mm -hmm. no idea what they're doing with it and now you can actually disable that or Mm -hmm. just never give it to them Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah definitely something everybody wanted for a long time because mm-hmm. you never wanted to add permissions to anything because it would right. be creepy but it sure. is actually not <laughs> makes sense were there any announcements that you felt they could have made possibly that wasn't or you were hoping that Google would make uh, a proper keyboard API oh wow yes yeah. many people have been complaining about I know that, yeah. it's just such a pain because you have no idea when the keyboard is up and you mm-hmm. do want to do things mm-hmm. like yeah. update your R slightly or <laughs> Yeah, it's a real pain to not being able to know what's the state. <laughs> okay, so taking things in a little uh, different direction, this is just like to get to know like your usage and like what kind of apps you use. Do you mean Google shipped like this deserted island sort of update, this hypothetical <laughs> sort of update where they're like, hey, you're allowed to install only three apps on your phone. Which three apps would you pick? Uh, hangouts to talk to people. Okay. Excellent choice. Um... Is it a big island or a small island? Oh, let's see. Let's say it's a medium size. Medium sized. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a deserted island, so probably nobody is there. So, right. Amazon to ship me things that I need. Mm-hmm. Okay. And food because they do that now, so what? I can Virtual survive. Virtual food. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no real food. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not that I actually have an Amazon app installed at the moment. <laughs> In that oh, yeah, case. See, that's a good choice. Yeah, Amazon app, it's their problem. I mean, like, even if it's a dessert. They need to ship it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's the promise. <laughs> probably Facebook to not get bored there. Come on, man. You just said, like, you were totally creeped out of Facebook. Well, you know? <laughs> I still use it, you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> okay, so assuming you were building, like, a brand new app from scratch, and you were allowed only three dependencies, right? Which three dependencies would you pick? Let's presume you have like the support library. The I app was going to say, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all that is in the three external dependencies. Which would you pick? Um, if I had to do any 
networking stuff retrofit because it just makes it so much easier. Always an excellent um, choice. What else? Um, some kind of event bus. Um, okay. Yeah, I currently use the Green Dow event bus, which works well. So okay. I'll probably use that again. Yeah, it just okay. makes things easier to have a proper architecture and okay. not have listeners all over the place. Okay. Um, the third one, Leak Canary. Ah, oh, oh. nice choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. You don't want to be worrying about those memory crashes. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Okay. If Google came to you and said, like, hey, you're allowed to change just one thing in Android, what would it be? I would be happy if they would be a bit stricter with manufacturers what they can do to the oh, operating system interesting. So I, like, I like your yeah i like how you like sort of like put a more they can't destroy nice. the whole system again <laughs> yeah, good choice good although choice. they do do already do that a bit more but yeah, okay they've started just I guess, yeah. material design is so nice and some right. companies still manage to <laughs> make it horrible like some yeah, yeah. Samsung maybe <laughs> yeah I, <know. laughs> I have a Samsung phone so I, I know totally what you mean uh, okay cool so uh, going back to IO like you, uh, in the last few IOs that you've been like, like who are the coolest people you've met so far Oof. Nobody. Nobody's no. cool here. <laughs> no, that's kidding. the thing. Every, you meet so many people. I True. don't think you can choose one single person. Ah, that's I see. Great. You went the diplomatic route there. Yeah. I like it. I like it. <laughs> no, I mean, that's the greatest thing about IO. You meet everybody and you can talk to anybody. Uh, if it's people working at Google or people building great apps or libraries or whatever, yeah. uh, things you use every day mm -hmm. and you can actually ask them about problems. Yeah. Uh, that's the best thing about the whole conference. Cool. And in the last few IOs that you've been, have you heard of anything super crazy or have you seen someone do something super crazy? Um, well, we've all seen the skydiving. Oh, yeah. With Google that Glass. That is a favorite. That is a favorite, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think otherwise like anything too crazy. Mm -hmm. Probably I'll think of something later. But okay. <laughs> works for now. Okay, cool. And this is this is the last question and probably the most important question. Okay. okay. You use Android Studio, obviously. Of course. Are you a light theme or a dark theme person? Light theme. Light theme? I know. Whoa, win. I know, <laughs> okay. rare probably. Yeah. But... Well, actually, you know, I, I thought it would be rare as well. Okay. But, like, you've know, been getting like, good reception on both sides. No, I... I don't know. I always liked light theme. The only thing I use is Flux because okay. I can't stand white screens okay. at night. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, Maria. Uh, have a great I.O. If people want to reach out to you, what's the best way they can do that? Uh, Twitter. Uh, my handle is Maria Neum, so N-E-U-M. Okay. And, yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. My name is uh, Danny Roa. Um, so I work over for uh, Foursquare, and um, I'm uh, in San Francisco, mm -hmm. and uh, I do Android. Yeah. So, Danny, I know you love wings, and I've heard that you're the perfect person to ask to, like, mm. where's the best wings anyone can get here in this? Mm. <laughs> best wings? Um, uh, I'd say only Asian wings. So, uh, oh, you have to okay. go to So restaurant in Soma. Interesting. So, that, okay. that's my uh, favorite wing place. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Now we'll get to the not-so-important questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what was the most exciting announcement you thought that they made at Google I.O. today? So definitely the ones at uh, Project ATAP. So mm -hmm. um, uh, I guess the 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 password thing mm -hmm. where they uh, where they look at your patterns, mm -hmm. your behavior. Mm -hmm. For me, that's that's gonna be, I think could, I think it's gonna be big, mm -hmm. uh, you know. But they don't have any timetable for that. So, um, but I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. Okay, cool. And on the flip side, did you think there was any announcement that you were hoping they would make, but they didn't? Um, hmm, maybe. Uh, I guess like since last year, a lot of Android developers were trying to uh, see if Google would, would introduce a new language mm -hmm. to build uh, on Android, yeah. uh, to build Android with. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but that's probably not going to happen in the near future. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. okay. So let's take it to like more of app usage, right? So, as you mean, Google shipped this crazy update where they say like, "Hey, you have only three. You're allowed only three apps on your phone. Yeah. Like you're on this like deserted island. You have only three apps. Mm. Which three apps would you pick?" 
Um, mm, I would I would want to say Foursquare, but if I'm <laughs> on a deserted island, uh-huh. I really don't have any other places to go. <laughs> right. So I definitely want to have a compass. Oh, so interesting. So that, that okay. if I'm on an island, I can navigate. Okay. Um, I want to have... Old school uh, island navigation. Yeah, island. I, would, okay. I want to have some... Uh, a uh, a siren thing okay. so that in case there are animals then uh, okay. I could sca- sca- oh, I could scare okay. them away okay, okay. and definitely the flashlight so that okay. uh, at night I can uh, I can still go and uh, navigate the island but you get the flashlight now for free right so yeah true 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 yeah yeah I'm a uh, so maybe or are you third... like on a pre lollipop update on this? Yeah, phone? yeah, yeah. I, in case I don't have yeah. lollipop on this phone, then I'm gonna, I'm, okay. a, I'm gonna need the flashlight app. Yeah, <laughs> okay, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So, assuming you're building like this new app from scratch, right? Like, what are three dependencies that you would pull? This yeah. from? You're allowed only three dependencies. Three dependencies. And you get the support library app compiler. Oh, okay. That comes yeah. free. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'll definitely have parceler. Okay. Some um, so that uh, okay. it, it's it's a. Uh, I, I hate uh, writing all those uh, parcel or code okay. um, <laughs> so that I can easily just like use it for fragments. Um, okay. And then um, calligraphy, mainly because I love using custom fonts. Okay. And then uh, I guess uh, the last one would be uh, RxJava okay. for, you know, for all event stuff. Yeah. Makes sense. I like your third choice a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if Google came to you and said, hey, Danny, you can change one thing in Android, what would you change? Oh, if no I pressure. can change yeah. one thing as as a developer or 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 on on in the framework uh, on in general, yeah. uh, like, you can do this one thing to Android. Yeah. What would you do? Oh, it's a it's a tough question. It's like I was hoping before with permissions, but now you're doing what I would yeah, want for granted. permissions. Yeah. So uh, so I guess that doesn't count anymore. But um. Uh, I guess uh, right now, as a developer, and I'm doing something with regards to play services. So, mm-hmm. so I guess if they would make maps available, Google Maps, even for non-play services. Oh, so, so like decouple that from play services, and we'll be right. able to like uh, add it as a dependency. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Okay, so what's like uh, the craziest thing that you've done or heard at I/O? Craziest done or heard? Um, uh, I guess craziest thing. I mean, it's probably not that crazy, but basically. I heard people, if you know, for speechless, a lot of people stayed in the same room pretty much just the whole day. Oh, yeah. So that, that's, 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 that's pretty crazy. funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Last question, and the most important question. In Android Studio, are you a light or a dark theme person? Oh, definitely dark theme. Dark Darkula. Darkula. Okay, Darkula. Yeah. okay yeah. all the way. Yes. Cool. Thank you so much for your time, Danny. If people want to reach out to you, like, what's the best place they can do that and uh, see all the stuff uh, that you Just do? on Twitter, uh, Danny Roa, D-A-N-N-Y-R-O-A. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you All so right. much. Have a great day. Right. Thanks, Chris. I'm Michael Bailey. I am an Android developer. I started doing Android development in 2010, and I'm recently I've been into figuring out how to better test our Android applications. Perfect. So, Michael, what was like the most exciting announcement that you heard here at IO? I was pretty excited that they added a platform-level API for fingerprint. Um, It's been one of the things I've been a little bit jealous of of iOS is that uh, they have very good fingerprint support, so I'm definitely looking forward to uh, devices that have uh, fingerprint support. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, Is there, like, anything that you were hoping Google would announce but they didn't at this I.O.? Um, I guess related to that, I, uh, the fingerprint support, there was no new hardware yet that has fingerprint support. So I was really hoping that there was going to be new hardware, although that was probably a long shot. But um, new hardware with fingerprint support would have been really nice. Makes sense. And this is just like to understand like better like your usage of apps. As you mean, Google shipped this update where you were allowed to install only three applications. Which three apps would you pick? Hmm... Well, I love Maps. Um, that, you know, that's a great app which comes on most devices. I think probably Maps, the camera, and Twitter. Yeah, good choices. Uh, okay, cool. Assuming you're building like a brand new application, and you are allowed to pull in only three dependencies, the Google support library, all that is in. Just three external dependencies. Which three would you pull in your app? Does it include testing or not testing? Mm, that's a good test. Let's include testing. Including testing, testing yes. yes. I would definitely have to pull in 
uh, Espresso, okay. um, which I guess technically now is part of the support library. So, um, yeah, it, it, that one kind of comes for free. Uh, let's see. I've used a lot of libraries. Um, pro- may, sometimes maybe more than I should. So that's a very hard question. Uh, Picasso, I think, is uh, just... If, if you have images in your app, you want Picasso. Um, I would say retrofit for certain use cases, especially if you have APIs that fit well with their model. Uh, retrofit is a very good choice. And I would probably, the other one would probably have to be Dagger. I haven't used Dagger 2 yet, but it looks very promising. But uh, I've been very happy with Dagger 1, which I was a little concerned when we, uh, you know, I, when I converted from RoboJuice to Dagger um, that I was losing some power um, because Dagger or Ju- RoboJuice had a, um, or Juice had a lot of nice features, but I really haven't missed too much of RoboJuice, and it's been kind of refreshing to have, um, you know, a simpler uh, API. And if I could pick a fourth, it would definitely be, now that I think about it, it would definitely be RxJava. Oh, yeah. So. There you go. <laughs> cool. Okay, so what's the craziest thing that you've either done or heard at an I.O.? You've been to a couple of I.O.s at this point, so yeah. what's, like, the craziest thing you've seen around Crazy. Besides the great music being playing at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> the craziest thing at an I.O. Uh, I don't know if it was particularly crazy, but it was uh, one of the most memorable things at an I.O. I was at I.O. in 2008. Okay. And the after party had uh, Flight of the Concords as the entertainment. Oh, nice. And back in 2008, I.O. wasn't nearly as... Um, crowded as it is today um, and the after party was um, I don't know if it wasn't particularly well announced that year but it actually wasn't all that well attended Okay. so I was maybe 10 feet on a bean bag nice. relaxing for the concert in front of Flight of the Concord so it was almost like a very small personal concert wow. uh, which was very uh, cool That is, yeah that is amazing I like that <laughs> I doubt we ever would be able to get to that kind of a situation again. <laughs> Probably, you know. Okay, and the last most important question. In Android Studio, are you a dark or light theme person? For a very long time. So I, I started using IntelliJ in version 2.5. Nice. Over 10 years ago. And so obviously there was no dark theme at that point. Uh, so I've been using light theme for a very long time and I I had tried different color schemes and different uh, themes like uh, Solaris or whatever that one is, Solarized. And I every time would go back to the default light theme on IntelliJ. But a number of my colleagues uh, were using the dark theme. And so when we would do pairing or code sharing, I was always a little jarred by their dark theme. So mainly to get used to what a lot of my <laughs> colleagues were using, recently in the past few months I've been using dark theme. So I've oh. converted. Um, so for now I'm on Darkula. <laughs> you succumb to the peer pressure there, man. <laughs> yes, definitely it was uh, peer pressure. Although now when I see the light theme, I definitely have in my mind that people are using some old version of IntelliJ. Right. So um, I, I, I guess I'm a convert now, mainly from peer pressure of seeing uh, my coworkers use the dark theme. Nice. Thank you so much for your time, Michael. Uh, if people want to reach out to you, what's the best way they can do that? I'm on Twitter. I am Yogurt Earl on Twitter. Always love that name. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm a great IO. Yeah. All right. So I want to give a special shout out to all my uh, fellow Android developers. IO was indeed amazing, but perhaps the best part of attending IO for me personally was just getting to meet all these amazing Android developers. They are some of the friendliest, most approachable and helpful folks that I've gotten to meet. Hope you enjoyed the show. Well, that wraps it up for this special episode on Google I.O. 2015. We don't have any special picks for Google I.O. as so many have been provided already this week. If you haven't checked it out yet, simply search for Google I.O. 2015 sessions and you'll get a list of things you can watch right there in the search results. You can find the show notes for this episode at fragmentedpodcast.com slash episodes slash nine. 
If you had feedback or suggestions for us, feel free to add your comments right there in the show notes. Alternatively, you can send a tweet to either Don or Kaushik via our Twitter accounts or directly to the Fragmented Podcast Twitter account at Fragmented Cast. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can reach me at Don Felker, that's D-O-N-N-F-E-L-K-E-R, or via my website at donfelker.com. If you'd like to get in touch with Kaushik, you can reach him at his Twitter handle at Kaushik Gopal, and that's K-A-U-S-H-I-K-G-O-P-A-L. Or you can reach him on his website at Kaushik.co, and that's K-A-U-S-H.co. Until next time.